I don't know if you guys have ever played it, but holy fuck, Phoenix Wright is the best thing in the world. Well, I got uh, a job at College Humor, and so, so basically someone said they would pay me money to live in New York. <laughs> Uh, so I moved here, and I, I kind of always wanted to because I, I interned uh, with College Humor in 2008 when I was still in college, and it was pretty great and a lot of fun. And New York is awesome, so it basically just needed the the impulse and like the actual like financial backing to do it. New York is its own little world, and you'll want to make like a joke about like how bad the subways are, and then you'll have to remember it's like, oh right, no nobody else has those like. <laughs> France would like those jokes, maybe. <laughs> Get some, some big London underground fans. Here's my exact address. I think everyone's really, it's a really encouraging environment, I guess. You know, we're just trying to make funny stuff for the internet and you can be as experimental or as inventive as you want. Um, and we're always trying to, you know, kind of keep up with everything that's always happening and yeah as long as everyone just wants to make good jokes <laughs> like i'll write i've written like, like one or two hardly workings maybe and then like uh i wrote uh, some video series like i did one called uh bear shark which came out recently which was like a animated uh kind of like it's like Wile E. Coyote, except he always, Wile E. Coyote always wins. It's like Baron Shark chasing a guy named Steve, and they always eat Steve at the end. Um, so that was really fun. We all, I did all these for like the Nintendo 3DS for the, their handheld thing. So like you could just download these videos on that service, and they're on 3D, which is exciting. Um, and then also did Dinosaur Office, which is kind of one of my favorite things. So they, I, occasionally I do video stuff when, when I have time. Well, the fun thing about working for a, a big, you know, internet comedy company is you have money to give to people. <laughs> so we, because we were working with Nintendo on this uh, project, so we it, initially Nintendo came to us and we're like, we're launching this Nintendo video service. Um, we want you guys to make some like pilots for potential shows for it, and so we we made like five shows originally. We made Dinosaur Office, we made Bear Shark, uh, we made one called uh, Next Level, uh, Duel, and then. One other one that I can't remember, uh, so we'll just pretend that I said it later. <clears throat> but um, so we made all these things for them, and then like they kind of just came back to us later and said like we like these. Now you can make full series out of them. But for that one, we knew that we wanted like this really kind of old timey like Warner Brothers style animation. So we reached out to Harry Potter because he was like the the closest thing to like someone who animates in Flash but like doesn't make characters that like slide into frame and like tween all over the place. They're like actually, yeah. It's like, hey, what do you think about video games? <laughs> it's like actually like very fluid characters. I don't know, like, one of the best animators on the internet, I think. I'm pretty much 100% digital at this point. Um, but what I like to do, and this is a thing, if you actually, if you go to my website, if you go to waldwell.com, you can actually see this little tab at the top that's called postcards. Um, and the, what I've started to do, just kind of just to keep in practice, is like I like to send postcards to people, and I'll just draw like a little something on there. And that's the only like traditional media time I really get. But it's it's really nice. It's just a nice little break to actually like sit away from a computer and draw. Because um, I love I love drawing digitally, and I think it's fantastic and it streamlines everything but yeah you definitely miss like the feeling of like a pin like a brush pin like dragging across the paper so yeah um, it's a trade-off oh boy this one oh man um, <laughs> that's the fun thing about making art for the internet is that you you're spending like hours and hours and hours making art for the internet and then you spend like five seconds posting that art to the internet. So you're basically spending like, I would say in general, I'm spending like four to five hours like preparing something to go on the internet. And in that time, I'm just like thinking about the internet and art in general and the scene and like just, it's just it's just a big torrent of regret and like, <laughs> uh, not of regret, but like, you know, of like expectation and delivery and then like regret and just like how you think people are gonna perceive things. Um, 
It's good though. I would say that the internet loves art and the internet loves like creators and things like that. Uh, unfortunately, the internet is this weird, there's a weird culture around the internet and we're all guilty of it. <clears throat> Whoa. Cool, cool dude alert. <laughs> um, there's a weird culture of like, it's kind of like scavenger culture on the internet. And I think we're all guilty of it, but it's like good and bad. Or it's like people, people praise people more for finding cool things than they do for making cool things. Like I think eventually you kind of break through and like if enough people have like found your stuff, they're like, oh, this person made this and this person's cool. But eventually like, if you go to say like, like Reddit or uh, Imgur or something like that, sites that I visit every day, so I have a right to critique them. Um, You'll notice that like the main, like the biggest posts are always people being like, my girlfriend made this, or like, check out this dumb thing my dad did. It's always like, they're always like shifting the blame from themselves for like the thing, for better or for worse, like creatively or um, not. They're just kind of, it's, they're always like, the, the, the main gist of it is that they're finding something and bringing it to you as opposed to making something for you. And I think that like, it's good because we want people to like be finding our stuff. I think that's like super helpful and that's like helped me a lot. But it's like dangerous because um, too much like you'll see people like put the emphasis on them like just finding other people's things and like the person that made it doesn't get enough credit. It's like a, it's a, it's a balance and it's always been like that but I feel like the internet has kind of like illuminated it a bit. I think Tumblr's better because they're better about like, they're actively better about trying to let creators source their stuff. Like if you, um, you can like upload a source for anything and usually that like is helpful. And like, it just like the, the main like structure of it is like, if you like something from somebody, you can reblog it to your blog. And it's not like you're like, I found this thing. It's like, I found this, like I follow this person who made this thing. So it's kind of, I think that just like the, the site architecture is, is better for artists. I'll say like, for purposes of art and for purposes of humor. Um, for art, I love um, like, like Miyazaki films. I think Nausicaa and the Valley of the Wind is one of my favorites. Just cause, it's, I don't know, it's like, it's got that like, real like 80s vibe of just kind of like, environmentalism, but like not in like a like over, like not in an overly harsh way. It's got that like Captain Planet 80s like environmentalism vibe. It's like still very like, like oh, we gotta save the earth because it, things are bad. <laughs> because bugs have taken over. It's like, oh, look, um, it's like, maybe we're the bad guy. <laughs> but, and then it's also just got the, just this kick in 80s soundtrack. It's just all like synth and like, um, just like Miyazaki's really good at, world building, especially in that, because that was like, I think an actual like manga that he wrote uh, and then made into a, like m made into an actual film. And that was, I feel like that was when he was still kind of like young and passionate about stuff. Now he's like, oh, make a, oh, make a movie about pig in an airplane. Wizard People Dear Readers, which is, uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with it. It's, do you know Brad Neely? He's a, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, he like the Professor Brothers guy and like he did uh, China, Illinois, which was on Adult Swim yeah, recently. Yeah. Also, I, I really like Tim and Eric was a, a fun, like, I think they kind of like just changed the game to a degree. They just made, they made weird okay. Anytime like someone who like likes making jokes is playing a video game, you always kind of are like winding around in your head like, this is weird, this is weird for these reasons. <clears throat> um, and so like you're kind of like building jokes while you do it. And I, I like making comics about video games and stuff because again, as I said, it's just a, a fun cheat because you're already like in the reader's head um, with that world. Um, uh, I guess like just as far as like video games are great because they're just like they're just kind of like these style resources as well. Like um, man, when I remember when Wind Waker came out and I, that was, I don't know that that. Should I, should I list like video games that like I like and that like, have impacted me? Or like specific like art from? Yeah. <clears throat> um, the Wind Waker is a great one. And like that whole like, I, I love that whole style. More so because like that this the Wind Waker style like wasn't just like a visual one. They kind of set up this whole different universe where things can be. It's kind of like the difference between like a Christopher Nolan superhero movie and a Joss Whedon superhero movie. It's like how like, Joss Whedon remembers that superheroes can be fun, while Christopher Nolan is like, everyone is frown town all the time. <clears throat> but like the, the Wind Waker series, and like more that style, and like I guess uh, 
Spirit Tracks and the other DS one are kind of similar to that. They they knew that like Link could be fun, and they specifically engineered his face to be just kind of like an emote machine. So like he's like if he's reacting to something, he's reacting like very loudly um, and in very fun ways. Like his, his his old face is just this big blank palette for like emoji essentially. Um, and yeah, I'm trying to, there's like some exact, oh, like uh, in Spirit Tracks, which I don't know if you've played or if you're familiar with, it's like a game where the premise is you drive a train around Hyrule, um, and you're hanging out with Zelda's ghost because a demon stole her body, and her ghost can possess uh, suits of armor that you have to lead around, but she's scared of mice, so you have to watch out for mice. That is the game. And it's just so wacky, and that, w that would never fly in like a Twilight Princess style game. So, um, I don't know, I like that. That's a great example of just like a style and an aesthetic and like a voice that are all really wedged together nicely. Well, I, um, oh man, I, I should mention this, and maybe we, uh, I, I grew up with like a, a Sega Genesis, so like Sonic the Hedgehog was like huge for me. It was like, it's, it's actually like very heartbreaking, like just watching, number one, like his whole like kind of like rise and fall, but also just going on the internet and finding out that a lot of people like Sonic a lot more than me in the in the underwear department. Um, they really like Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> um, so much that they, they drew themselves and Sonic the Hedgehog doing things to each other. But like, I think that was like how I learned to draw actually. It was like I got uh, a Sega Genesis in like second grade and I just taught myself how to draw Sonic because it's like you basically draw like a hot dog and like a little nose on the hot dog and then some spikes and then the weird like eyes that connect for some reason. So yeah, I just like those games were like really just like lush in their visual visual style and like the music was really really good and poppy and catchy and like each each world like it was a very familiar video game thing where it's like oh this is the ice level and this is like the fire level but like. They all just like felt so big and like polished. Um, I don't know. It was like a good intro for me into just like kind of aesthetics. Um, but yeah, I think I, I and I, I was gonna mention that I was gonna come around to it that like I liked Sonic so much that I drew fan comics in like second grade uh, that follow like they kind of fill in the story of Sonic the Hedgehogs two and three. I think actually three. So it's like it's kind of like it's just a retelling of Sonic the Hedgehog 3, but like I decided that it would be better if, if there was word bubbles and dialogue. And then this one is uh, this is Sonic and Sonic Sonic and Knuckles. Uh, so it focuses around the events that occur in uh, Mushroom Hill Zone. Oh, so many, so many things. Um, I want to. I've been getting really interested in. So I did this. I did this thing for the site a little a while back. Uh, like it was like a, a digital choose your own adventure, and I love that. I love kind of like branching narratives like that. And I think that people like branching narratives in general. Um, and I would love to be able to do like a, a visual novel style game. Oh, uh, we should go back in time, and I can tell you that one of my favorite my, about my favorite game series uh, that I forgot to mention. But uh, Phoenix Wright. I don't know if you guys have ever played it, but holy fuck, Phoenix Wright is the best thing in the world. <clears throat> Because it's like such an unconventional video game, and it's more of a, a visual novel in, in just overall. But like, it, you get so excited for such minutia in that game, uh, and then it gets really fantastic. But I'd love to be able to do like a visual novel style game at some point. Um, I'm, I would love to be able to like, you know, kind of do more animation type stuff, uh, like I've done with uh, Bear Shark and Dinosaur Office. So I'm trying to keep up with that. Uh, I'll basically, and this has kind of always been my, my approach, is I'll basically do anything that anyone lets me do. <laughs> so I'll just keep trying to do things. Else, what other games are there? <clears throat> oh my!